Let's jump over to our man Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can read Teddy's outstanding newsletter, The Tiger Forex Report. Come on over to the front page of TFNN, right under the newsletter tab. Teddy puts out a new issue every Monday. I always read that one on Monday mornings. Uh, we'll talk about some of the price levels he's got in there right now. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Uh, quite a relentless market to the upside, man. We've had some action in notes and bonds. We've had some action in the dollar index. We're back above 100. Uh, where do you want to kick things off? What are you looking at in this market right now? Uh, well, I'd say the three movers and shakers in the currency market is the pound, the yen, and the Canada. Which one would you like to talk about? Uh, let's go to the yen. We got a lot of people that love the yen, okay. of course. I know that's a big one for gold. Uh, we've had some moves in there as well. But yeah, let's talk a little yen. Uh, well, you know, last week we set a nice little swing low, and uh, that was kind of at the, to the top end of a correction range that I was looking for. The overall trend is obviously a bull, long-term, short-term, what have you. And I think that as long as last week's uh, low holds, I think you have a good chance of seeing the yen probably get back up to that 142, 143 area over the next week or two. Nice. Now, is that in... in you know, looking for that 142. So I see, I put it up on even a daily, a weekly. I know we have highs recently <coughs> made above 144. When you're looking at 142, where are you getting that price level from, Teddy? I'm just curious as to why, how are you looking at that range? Okay, well, <clears throat> let's just say that uh, the trend is still remaining a bull. Well, then we should be heading up towards that level anyhow. And even if the market is turning, which I don't see it happening because there's no reason to think that the Bank of Japan is going to do anything suddenly that would – be kind of like hawkish by any means, if you will. Um, so I think that if even if there if the trend was turning, that would be a great correction level to the upside for a sell. You know, so I think for no either either way, whether you're a bull or a bear, you have to gravitate towards that 142 area. You know, only if the low from last week gets taken out, would I start to think that maybe this is. Uh, I wouldn't say necessarily turning, but becoming a digestive phase for the U.S. dollar yen overall. You know, there's no real any indication that, or fundamentally or technically, that we're going to have a major sell-off in that market. Nice. How about uh, let's jump to the pound next, if we can, since you okay. said that. Let's talk a little pound. Sure. Okay, well, the British pound today, the CPI for uh, the UK came out uh, better than forecasted. I think this is kind of a knee-jerk reaction um, as far as what's going on with the pound. I, the overall, obviously, the trend is a bull right now. Uh, there's still a lot of question as to whether the BOE is going to, what they're going to do exactly, whether it's just going to raise rates or if they're going to do something else fundamentally that could help support the currency. I mean, their, their economy is in shambles, and I, now... Granted that it came out, it beat forecast, you know, but it's not saying very much. It's not saying that inflation disappeared. It's just not going at the rate that it was. You know, it's kind of like our, how our CPI came out two weeks ago, you know, where, you know, it, it came out, everyone's saying, oh, it's so positive, it's going in the right direction. Well, it, it's still rising. It's just, it's not raising, rising at a rapid rate like it had been, you know. So I wouldn't read too much into it. I think that today's trading is probably due to overall dollar strength. But that's the big mover today is the big sell-off. So I'd be careful if you were short selling into that move this morning. You might see a little bit of a, of a head fake rally yet with that one still. Yeah, quite a move for sure, man. You put that short-term basis down to almost uh, just below 129. We're pushing well above 130 on that move. And how about you mentioned the Canadian dollar? You want to talk about that? Sure, sure. So the Canadian dollar, let's see, where is it trading at right now? I think it's at... It's trading at 130, 160, 163-ish. Yeah, I would watch to see how today happens. If if we settle kind of like where we're at or even a little bit lower, um, I, I'd be very careful selling it in the hole with the U.S. dollar Canada. Now, overall, that market is in a bearish trend, um, at least short-term and intermediate. Uh, however, the low that was set, it was a good buy signal set last week. So I would key off of that low. If we take that out, obviously, the trend, <laughs> it's a bearish you know, uh, signal. But without a doubt. However, I think right now that it's it's stabilizing and this is kind of going to catch a lot of weak sh uh, shorts, I think, um, with their uh, pants down tomorrow. Like if we see a reversal tomorrow in the Canada, U.S. dollar Canada trade where we end up having a nice positive up day, um, I would really think that over the next few sessions afterwards, you'll still see another uh, rally follow through, uh, excuse me, uh, follow through leg higher with the U.S. dollar Canada before it starts to turn back on support. Nice. And can we talk a little bit of Swiss franc, man? Because I was reading, sure. I know you got a chart of this in your newsletter, of course, as you always do. But boy, uh, my best friend, Teddy, lives 
in Switzerland and I'm going over to Spain, but boy, it's quite a, a pullback, man, to 86. I remember when we were first talking, it was parody. Um, mm -hmm. And you're talking about at 86 now. It doesn't seem like it's going to be slowing down anytime soon. What What is going on with the Swiss uh, franc? Well, the Swiss franc is making me look really good from when we had that end of the year forecast predictions for uh, the overall currency markets. You know, I I, remember, I've been saying man. for a, yeah. a long time that the the trend overall with the U.S. dollar Swiss is now a a bear. You know, long term, no matter what the dollar strength comes in on any other technical or fundamental manner versus the other currencies. Uh, that, that's just a trade that's there. There's no reason to think that um, the dollar is going to really turn against the Swiss. I mean, there are obviously things that can happen. You know, sure. any, anything is possible, especially if there's some kind of big economic panic going on in Europe. Um, but it, it, unless there's any major changes fundamentally, uh, I think that you have to be a sell rally uh, uh, trader for the U.S. dollar Swiss. Now, granted, it's 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 grinding these lows. You know, and I, I liked when it kind of like bottomed out last week. I mean, if you look at the trend, it, it was a pretty severe drop off, and now it looks like more of a kind of consolidation grind lower and that's what worries me that no matter what the dollar strength may come in versus other pairs that this one is probably going to continue lower like i think right now you're trading at 85 79 it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility that before we get into or too far into august that we see the 82 handle in the u.s dollar swiss so yeah, I appreciate it, man. It's pretty, that's, I, you know, just even taking a look at the chart, you go back, I mean, lower lows, lower highs, right? For the better part of, man, 10 months, even, even, mm -hmm. yeah, pretty, pretty stark. Uh, we got to talk a little bit of crude. What do you think of the action in crude right now? Sitting at almost $77. Uh, you know what? I think it's in a choppy range trade. We're kind of at the upper end of the range right now. I don't see it really breaking out to the upside or downside in any big way right now. There's no fundamental or technical reason it's just it's it's a drift is what it is you know i mean i'm happy yeah. that it's not rallying um but i mean i think there's more of a buy break forecast for it i'd be i'd be looking to buy into into weakness more than selling into sure. strength right now it is pretty remarkable man again i pull it up just going back i mean this thing's basically been between 70 bucks and 80 bucks and we've had a couple outliers over the course but since november so you're talking about again nine months mm -hmm. almost where this thing's been chopping around um, and you've now, been if we have about higher that. rates, if the Fed starts to jump on a hawkish thing again, then we might see an uptick in oil just because of the cost to carry over effect that may happen. That's a possibility fundamentally. Okay. Well, Teddy, I appreciate it as always, man. Uh, we look forward to talking to you next week, and we'll talk to you on Wednesday, man. Sounds good, Tommy. Take care. Thanks so much.